All right, welcome back to KM6 LYW Radio. This is a show where we talk about amateur radio or ham radio with an emphasis on data or digital modes, trying to reimagine them in the information age. Uh, today's no exception. We're going to talk about rig control and ham lib and cat control, how to control your radio using your computer, change the frequency, set the power levels, even set the backlight. Maybe we're going to rearrange them into a series of commands to add some new features to existing radios. Uh, we're going to take a look at this ICOM 705 here, for example. And we're going to do that today on KM6 LYW Radio. Hi, the bumper music. You know, that was supposed to be a one-time gag. Welcome back. Yeah, we're just supposed to do the bumper music the one time. But anyways, you guys comment more about the bumper music than the content. So keep it up, guys. You're going to keep getting the bumper music. Let's make myself a lot smaller here. All right, so let's see. We've got a, um, a Raspberry Pi here. This is basically a Linux computer. This is the DigiPi. Um, this is an SD card image that I give out to patrons of the channel. You just stick this in your Raspberry Pi, and it includes all of the technologies we talk about on this channel. It's all in one SD card and has a cool little screen, has APRS, packet, all of the, the digital modes you can think of are all in there. It's hooked up to the ICOM 705 using a USB cable, you can see there. And uh, we're gonna use CAT or CIV control to control the ICOM 705. Now, each manufacturer has their own CAT control. That's, that's computer-aided T, so I'm sure it's something clever. But anyways, it's a way to send a series of numbers to the radio to change the radio, radio's behavior. Like I said, change the frequency, power level, something like that. Every manufacturer has their own implementation. Uh, like for, for ICOM, I actually spent an hour on this yesterday. You send a series of bytes to the radio, like FD, FD, and then packet number or uh, command number, sub command number data. Anyways, I gave up after an hour, you know, and I'm a software engineer. It's like, this is ridiculous. So luckily the good folks out at Rig Control and Hamlib have come up with this universal translator. So you can send normal human readable commands to a translator and it will translate those commands into what the radio understands those weird byte values and things and and that's called rig control now rig control is just something you run on the computer it runs in the background it connects to your radio usually over a usb bus but there's you can use serial ports and stuff like that it supports about 150 different radios and then you can connect to rig control over the network and just send it little commands little snippets of commands like uh, if I want to change the mode to upper side mount, I literally send the, the, the letter M followed by space and then USB, and the radio suddenly goes into upper sideband mode. So there's hundreds of these commands, and it works with lots of different radios. Um, the ICOM 705 is plugged in today. I've tested this out with the Yaesu 991, the 7300, and you can use the same commands on all of these different radios. So again, it's a universal translator, so you can get a command line login or login prompt for your radio. So let's check it out. Right now we've got the ICOM 705 on an APRS frequency in the United States. We've got the DigiPi in TNC mode. It's just kind of listening for packets coming in and forwarding those on. Of course, you know, we can see the packets come in and over Bluetooth on our Wi-Fi device here as well well. Uh, but let's see if we can make this radio do something without touching any of the dials or knobs. That's kind of the point of the exercise here today. So let's open a shell on a Raspberry Pi. Of course, on the DigiPi, you just click on shell. Um, on your Raspberry Pi, I guess you'd use putty or something to get to it. We'll log in as the Pi user. So I can type it right the first time. Unbelievable. Um, so on the Raspberry I should say on the DigiPi to start the rig control daemon. This is the universal translator that runs in the background. You just press the on button right here. I know, complicated, right? That's why we built the DigiPi, guys. Um, so I got your feedback. Linux doesn't have to be hard. So this is a web-based management interface for this Raspberry Pi. Uh, I can turn all these services off and on and they will pop up here on the Pi. Okay, so rig control daemon is running um, on your Raspberry Pi. I think you just run um, well, actually, I got. The, I can show you a copy of the command that DigiPi uses. We'll make this easy. Hang on. Let me open a shell here. All right. And so, if you're not using a DigiPi, you can do it the hard way, and that's a uh, cat etc system. You can, you can ignore this command. You know, this is the hard part of Linux. We, we make it. It should be easier than this. So this is the rig control command. So run rig ctld, and then dash m three zero eight five, and this is the model number for the ICOM seven zero five. And then I want you to do R for 
I don't know what even the R stands for. Anyways, you put the device file. This could be dev TTY ACM0. That's for the IECOM 705. For a lot of other radios like the Yaesu 991, it's going to be dev TTY USB0, uppercase USB, and then give it a, a baud rate. In the case of the ICOM 705, it's 115200. Uh, to get the list of model numbers, uh, this is 3085. You can run rig CTLD minus L for list radios. That one actually makes sense. And you'd scroll up here and look for the ICOM 705. I think it's like, I've almost got it memorized now. Yeah, here's the ICOM 705 and that's model 3085. All right, so now we've got rig control D running. Okay, we use that command. And in fact, I can run PSAUX, pipe it to grip rig CTL and we'll see the command running. Ah, there it is, it's running. So we know it's up and running. Now we can start talking to it. Now it's just sitting there listening for network connections and listening for you to send a few commands to it and then maybe it'll respond with a response code. And when you give it a valid command, it'll translate that command into the binary format the ICOM 705 understands and tells the, the 705 to go ahead and do that. So there's a short list of useful commands that I came up with. There's literally hundreds of commands, but let's just, uh, I've got a cheat sheet down here. You don't have to read one. This is just so I can cut and paste this. So let's just see what the ICOM 705 is tuned to. All right, so I'm gonna, Cut and paste this command. I wish I could zoom this in more. You can see it at the bottom of your screen, right? Anyways, this command, it says echo, and we're gonna echo the lowercase letter F in quotes, and we're gonna pipe that F into a new program called NC, that stands for Netcat. It's not that complicated. Netcat, all Netcat does is send some bytes to a program over the network, and it sends it. Every program is listening on a different port. In the case of rig control, it's four five three two. So you don't need to understand how or why this stuff works. You just go ahead and issue these commands. So I'm going to issue the, the the letter F to Netcat, and the Netcat's going to forward that letter F onto rig control, which is listening on port forty five thirty two on the network. All right, that was, that was the hardest part, guys. Stay with me. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna press that, and you'll notice what comes back here. It says 144390. Let me see if I can zoom this in a little more. I know a lot of you guys use this on phones and stuff. Uh, zoom it a little bit more. It echoes back 144390, and looking at our display here, yep, it's on 144390. You know, if I was to change the value to 144409, run the exact same command, it says 144. 409 here. Okay, so we can get the frequency off a radio. I know that's not a lot of fun. Stick with me. There's a lot of cool stuff we can do. So let's say I want to set the uh, set it back to the APRS frequency. Um, I can do echo uppercase F. That means set the frequency this time. Okay, and I'm going to set that to 144391234. You got to carry it all the way out in hertz. And now if you watch the radio down there in the bottom right part of your screen, hit return and it switched back to 14439. So we were able to get and set the radio frequency. All right, and we're using Netcat, and that's sending our commands onto the rig control daemon, which is sending them over USB in binary format to tell the radio what the heck we wanna do. So there's all kinds of cool commands we can do. Um, so if I wanna get the mode, so right now it's in um, FM digital, I can just send the lowercase m to rig control. And it tells me that I'm in packet FM mode. And sure enough, you can see in the upper left-hand corner there, it says FM-D, that's packet FM mode. This could be upper sideband or something like that. In fact, if I want to set it to upper sideband, I can echo the uppercase M space USB for upper sideband. And then I can put the filter width, like something like 2800 hertz. I'm going to run that. Now we're going to go into upper sideband mode here. If you, if you watch in the upper left-hand corner, and now it says USB instead of FM-D, and it should be making a ton of noise. And it's about 2800 uh, hertz filter there. Cool. <laughs> um, and then if I want to set it back to, what do I, I can set it back to packet FM, so that's obnoxious, F-P-K-T-F-M. Did it set it? Nah, it's probably because I'm in channelized mode. Test all these out before you mess with them. Whoop, no, no, no. We're out of control, out of control. All right, we're in FM data back on APRS. Uh, just to give you some other examples here, like just, you know, setting the backlight's kind of interesting. I don't, know, I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you can say capital P, which the uppercase letter means change the setting. A lowercase letter usually means receive the setting or tell me what the setting is. And I can kick this up to 0.9 and watch the backlight. You know, super bright, actually too bright for video. You know, to video these things, I usually have them like down at 0.1. 
Check that out. It's easier to read. It's, it looks dim here, but it shows up on camera pretty well. So I've, I've totally changed the backlight using a command prompt on my Raspberry Pi, um, using ham living rig control. Um, let's say you've got a bunch of memory channels on your ICOM 705. You know, I, I got APRS in channel 99. I got the club repeater on channel 58. So again, if I send an uppercase, remember uppercase means set the value, uppercase E to means set the channel to 98. So this should change it over, I don't know what it's gonna change it over. Channel 98, yeah, it's simplex. So 146.52, it changed it over. Now if I wanna change it back to the APRS frequency on channel 99, I send uppercase E, 99, we're back on the APRS frequency. Um, you can power up the radio, power it down. Um, another one is just to see if the squelch is open. Um, you can see where this is gonna come into play. Um, you, you can actually uh, do a longer command. In this case, we're gonna do echo and then plus uh, backslash git data carrier detect. I think that's what DCD means. Um, this just, just tells you if the squelch is open and you can see it responded with the DCD equals zero, okay? Um, that means the squelch wasn't open the, the moment I typed that. Now, if someone was transmitting a packet with say DCD one, the squelch would be open and we can detect that. So why is this interesting, Craig? Well, I want this ICOM 705. It sucks that it doesn't have two receivers in it. You pay $1,000 for a radio and there's one FM receiver. But what if I want to do APRS all day, listens for packets, you know, get my email, texts, uh, SMS um, on the APRS frequency where it's at now. But I also want to like monitor or maybe dual watch. That's the, the term we want. The club repeater, the voice repeater. You know, I want to, you know, if there's people are talking there, I want to listen to that and maybe interact. But if, you know, if they're not talking there, I want this to be doing APRS and doing packet stuff. I want the DigiPi, you know, downloading all those packets. And I want to get all the texts and email on my phone here over the APRS frequency. And I want to do that most of the time, but I want to have priority for the voice repeater, which is on channel 58. So in fact, if I go to channel 58, you guys already know we can do this, right? So we can change the channel to 58. I bet you there's someone talking. I think we're having a net right now. So I can change it over. I'm going to send the uppercase E58. And we just changed it over to the club repeater. You are doing fine. Sarah is... Right? Okay, let's change it back to channel 99. This is a hassle to have to type this, right? I want a dual watch ICOM 705. I want it to be on APRS most of the time and I want it to listen to the club voice repeater if and only if it's actually in use or someone's talking. Uh, we can do that. We can do that with rig control, especially if we turn the packet volume down, that's loud. I don't know if the mic picks up those packets very well. Anyways, I wrote a program to create a dual watch. Um, so I'm gonna paste this in the comments be below the video. It's called dualwatch.sh. I know that's really clever, huh? Um, I don't know how much bigger I can make this. What I don't want it to do is wrap. All right, I can do that and you guys don't, won't get too much clipping here. So this is a shell script. Ideally, we would do this in Python or something like that, but this is kind of a great example of using rig control to add a new functionality to an existing radio, a very expensive radio, I might add, that doesn't otherwise have priority dual watch built in. So at the top of the program, I've got the repeater channel that I like. This is the club repeater. It's on channel 58. I programmed that programmed that in earlier. And then we've got the APRS channel. That's 14439 in Americas. Uh, I think it's 144.8 in Europe. That's on channel 99. And I want to define these at the top. So what this program is going to do is it's going to sit there on the APRS channel for about five seconds. And every, and every five seconds, I'm going to go over to the voice repeater and, and see if the squelch is open. And if the squelch is open, if and only if the squelch is open, it's gonna hang out on that channel until it eventually closes, okay? And that's exactly what this code does. You don't need to be a programmer to do this. You can cut and paste this into a, uh, a shell script. Again, I can put it into a file on your Raspberry Pi and run it, I'll put it on the bottom of our notes here. So just while true, this means just loop forever. That's what while true means. And then I want, you, I want to echo uppercase E, and the repeater channel, which is channel 58, and I wanna send that to rig control, and that'll change the channel to the repeater channel, which is 58, which is our voice repeater. And then uh, it's gonna look at the squelch, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna send the command git data carrier detect, I think that's what that means, and if it returns a one, that means the squelch is open, and it means I wanna hang out on that channel for a while. I'm just gonna sleep for five seconds, and I'm actually gonna print squelch is opening, listening to channel. And then after a while, I'm gonna keep checking that. And now when and if the squelch actually closes, people stop talking, um, I'm gonna go ahead and send an uppercase E command to rig control and set it back to my APRS channel, which is 99 in my case. And then I'm gonna sleep there for five seconds. And you can change these sleep values. Um, yeah. 
we'll, we'll dial this in with a more appropriate Python code at some point with a connected socket and things like that. But right now we're just we're just slamming commands through Netcat into rig control that's sending them over to the radio. And let's see if this works. So right now we've got somebody on the voice repeater. Um, I was hoping we get a repeater that comes and goes. So I'm gonna run dual watch dot slash dual watch. And it immediately switched over to the voice repeater. You'll notice it switched over from APRS. Um, let me see if I can simulate. A, we, what I need is a repeater that isn't active. So it keeps switching back to that because there's something on there. Let me change the repeater number to a less active. I'm going to VI uh, digit uh, dual watch. I'm going to change it to channel, I don't know, 61. I don't think there's anyone there. Watch, there'll be somebody there. Now when I run do a watch, you'll see it goes over to channel 99. That's APRS. It's hanging out and listening there. And you notice right now it's on the repeater channel, then it switches back. And every five seconds, it's going to go check the repeater channel and then switch back to APRS and do packet stuff every five seconds. And then switch back to voice. It looks for the squelch to be open. It's not open, so it switches back. So we basically, we have a dual watch, uh, ICOM 705 that's doing packet operations most of the time, unless someone's talking on a repeater. And we did all of that using uh, rig control and hamlib and with this very sh simple shell script. Um, so on your Raspberry Pi, just for completeness, um, you're gonna go into, you know, you're gonna get the code off the bottom of this uh, video in the comments and you're going to select all the code like that however you do and then you're going to do like vi slash temp d dot sh okay that's what your file will be called actually you put it in um digipi is read only yeah, it's it's read write right now so i'm going to say uh i'm going to vi dw dot sh all right and then you're going to paste that content in here all right, and then you're gonna save the file. You can use nano editor if you want. And then don't forget to do change mod 755DW, the file you just created with that code in it. And that makes it executable. Now you can run dw.sh, and now you've got your dual watch radio. And you can see the text is actually going back between repeater and APRS here. So you can kind of monitor what it's doing on the screen. And you can also see what it's doing on the ICOM 705. It's APRS now. Goes back, checks the repeater. Oh, no squelch open. Let's go back to APRS and hang out. And you can change those sleep values in the code too to kind of get the behavior you want. Oh, in fact, I'll update it a little bit to work around some of the idiosyncrasies in Netcat so it'll happen a little faster. You know, in my truck, I've got an FTM 100 and it does this, you know, it's a cheap radio and it, it'll stay on APRS its whole life unless someone's talking on the voice repeater and in which case it's listening to the voice repeater. It's that simple. Just remember, don't do any transmitting. Don't be like sending texts, you know, when you're potentially changing the radio over to the voice thing. <laughs> I'm, I'm guilty of that. All right, so we create, we used Hamlib and rig control. We we used some of the cool commands. Um, I, in fact, I will put my little cheat sheet down in the notes as well so you guys can copy these. These are all the commands I ran and, and then some um, for rig control. And you, these should work with any rig control powered radio. And uh, again, I just using the ICOM 705 here and I totally changed the radio, the features of the radio. I added a feature to the ICOM 705 using nothing more than a Raspberry Pi and the, the rig control command line interface so I can talk to it, programmatically do stuff with the radio. All right, guys, thank you for hanging out with me today. Let me know if you've got other cool uses for rig control and, you know, maybe you were able to write, script up something to add some new behavior or feature to your radio. I would like to know about it. In fact, I'm going to use this, you know, a lot of times I don't use the ICOM 705 because I it one it doesn't have APRS built in and two it didn't have the dual watch um, you know with the, the digipi here it has all of that uh, it has exactly what I want so I'm gonna leave this radio on more often now rather than the old uh, FTM 400 over there all right guys thank you so much you know if it wasn't for you guys and the patrons of the channel um, it, this wouldn't happen I really appreciate the help here guys you have no idea um, this is like beer money. So, you know, every time the wife complains, it's like, why are you still doing all that radio stuff, Craig? Why are you making all those videos? Like, you know, the Patreon money, I can take the XYL out to dinner. Huh? Yeah, and then suddenly this is an okay hobby, right? Hey, man, cheat until you win. Hey, Foo, Steve, uh, NW, that's Mark, uh, Ryan, Brian, Jake, Christopher, Tony, Michael, Ian, Jim, Brad, Simon. Thank you, guys. Buddy Brown, Kevin King, Robert. Thank you, guys. There's just too many names to really read here. Uh, so Tom, Heath, thank you, guys. Theodore... 
we're into the hundreds, obviously. And you guys are all sending me great information about your DigiPie builds, and they're fantastic. Keep sending me photos. Um, I did make a, a video a while back of viewer builds. I'll have to make another one of those to, to check out your ingenuity and all of the cool DigiPies that you have built. All right, Juan, Ryan, Ernest, uh, we got Jane, John, Jeremy, Brett, Andre. I, this is an order of people who have been with me the longest, I think. Um, so, uh, Sergey, Randy, Sean, Craig. Hey, Craig. Um, <laughs> I know I got an email from you the other day just because we share names. That's, that's the only reason I remember that. Hey, thanks for the help. So patrons of the channel get access to the DigiPi uh, SD card image. Um, if you go to digipi.org, you're going to see how to get that. And, uh, and, and as soon as you're a patron, you can download this DigiPi uh, SD card image, jam it in your Raspberry Pi, get the, actually you can't see it, uh, get the little optional screen that you see on there. The DigiPi will drive that screen, um, and, and it has all of these different modes. JSA, called FT8, FL, Digi, SS, Slow Scan Television, of course, APRS, which you've been, it's been doing the whole time. We've been messing with this, at least uh, while it was in dual watch mode on the ICOM 705. Uh, packet bulletin board systems built into that. Anyways, the DigiPi is just a lot of fun, and it's all web-based. It's all web-managed. Um, you don't really need to be a Linux expert to use the DigiPi. All right, guys. This has been another production of KM6 LYW Radio. My name is Craig in cool California, and I am clear.